So, um, you know, again, put yourself in the shoes of one of these CEOs or all of these CEOs. Uh, the profits are going down. The system that's been working great uh, for decades all of a sudden stops working, but there's no new paradigm, no new strategy to replace it. You know, they're confused. They're under attack. Society's falling apart. The Vietnam War, these insurgent social movements, uh, decline of authority. Business is being blamed for all kinds of things. The environmental movement is rising. There's more environmental regulation, which is costly. Uh, you know, they, they feel like they're like under assault and they don't know what's going to work. Um, so there was a series of meetings um, convened by a group called the Conference Board in 1974 and 75, uh, which two reporters or a reporter and a sociologist were allowed to attend on condition that they not say, you know, attribute the quotes that they got out of those meetings. And it's like a window into the corporate mind at that time. The references are over on, on that chart. The, the book is um, Ethics and Profits by Leonard Silk and David Vogel. And the other books listed there are other books that help uh, kind of add up to a picture of kind of the corporate comeback uh, to declining profitability. And um, my email's on there, Mike Prokash at Verizon. So email me if you want notes, you know, details about, about this stuff. But um, here are some of the quotes from then. Um, actually, the first quote is from before then. It comes from David Rockefeller, uh, who was head of Chase Manhattan Bank and who wrote in Chase's 1971 annual report, it is clear to me that the entire structure of our society is being challenged. These people are feeling like you know, they're losing control. Um, um, here are some of the other quotes from those meetings. Um, uh, if we don't take action now, we will see our own demise. We will evolve into another social democracy. So, but no, listen, listen to that. I mean, you know, uh, the person who said that uh, believes that that kind of power sharing or that co-determination by a business and labor is like the end of the end of the world. They're, they don't want to share power. These are people who are used to running the show and they are unwilling to give that up, running the show in the workplace and in society. They're used to being in charge and they're, uh, and they're not going to give that up. Well, uh, we don't know. Okay. Um, uh, they blamed uh, crypto socialism and excessive government interference. They blamed environmental extremists. Um, they hear more quotes. In the marketplace, everyone, every person gets a vote every day. The market is more democratic than government. Um, my industry is regulated up to its neck. You are regulated up to your knees, and the tide is coming in. <laughs> I spend too much time every day complying with government regulations. Um, the social responsibility of business should be decided by boards of directors, but now it is decided by Congress. We're having a major intrusion of government into formerly private decisions. Here's my favorite from uh, railroads and utility companies. We have been regulated for nearly 100 years, and we have never gotten used to being told how to run our own business. 100 years, and they're still not reconciled to it. Social responsibility has become a burden on productive America. We may be engulfed by a rising weight of entitlement. The reason I'm doing it is this is that everything that the right is saying now, you hear then. And it's coming from the, head, the heads of corporations that are running the show. Um, our, our, uh, this 74-75, uh, when they were still trying to figure out how to put it together to reestablish control. Um, our enemies want cradle-to-grave security for everyone. <laughs> enemies. Um, um, uh, the trend started in the New Deal and shows no sign of stopping. Uh, the have-nots are gaining steadily more political power to distribute the wealth downward. The masses have turned to larger government. Uh, we are moving from an incentive society to a controlled one. We need a sharp recession. People need to recognize that a job is the most important thing they can have. Um, can we still afford one man, one vote? One man, one vote has undermined the power of business in all capitalist countries since World War II. Um, um, a representative democracy has never worked in the history of the world, and we are seeing that here. <laughs> Maybe we should take the franchise away from government employees so the system can be restored. So, 
it's no wonder that things that happened happened. But note that they are also targeting government. It's also, it, not, it's also not true. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but, but maybe from their point of view it is. Yeah. But, no. but I mean, it's, it's, it's factually not true. Yes. This, business has more power than ever in this society. And, right. and their, their notion that they're a con their constant assault is just nonsense. Right. But, but they were under a lot more assault then than they were used to. No. The Trilateral Commission put out a book called The Crisis of Democracy. Mm -hmm. And of course, the main point of that book was there's too much democracy. And the, uh, my favorite quote from that is, a minimum of democracy will be necessary to restore order in the long term. <laughs> and the same, that was the private narrative. And the same kind of public narrative in the mid-70s was about uh, scarcity, learning to adjust to scarcity, to, let, to, to live with less, right. et cetera. That was what they were putting out for public. Society. OK, so here's Paul Volcker, Greenspan's predecessor at the Fed in 1979. Um, before he quadrupled interest rates and like killed the economy, the standard of living of the average American has to decline. And he was in a position to do it.